right so can anyone give recap what we have learned yesterday anyone yesterday we discussed about oh, yes. history of sql what is my sql why is sql important and the what is uh, what are the popular databases we discussed about that popular database no i guess no uh, anything else what we discussed so we we started with database one by one one by one so can you hear me mm, yeah, so yeah go ahead go ahead we started with the introduction to database the definition and that also of data and sql and also the the parameters in a relational database management system which is a table row columns and values then we also went deeper into example practical examples of what oltp and what olap means and then we we'll, we we'll talk about the history of SQL and why SQL is important. And you also give an assignment on, on the check-in and checking out for some days. I think that's where we stopped. Okay. So you're all good with to get that iPhone? Yes. Started? Yes. Everyone? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When you're talking about SQL, uh, we have actually talked about two important things. The two important things that we uh, discussed about is a OLAP and OLTP, right? So another example which I want to give for OLAP is, imagine that you are watching Netflix movies, right? Netflix series. What happens in reality is, first two days they'll actually get through what you're seeing, what type of movies you're watching, okay? Like, are you watching any action movies or uh, are you watching any uh, comic movies? So they try to first identify your pattern. Depending on that, they will be actually recommending you the right movie for you, right? The same thing, they'll not give it immediately. On the day one, that is just like on the day one you get subscribed, they're not going to recommend you the movies, right? They're going to understand your pattern. They're going to go through the pattern of, let's say, three days, four days, they're going through your history and only then they are actually going to give you the, they're actually going to give you the recommendation, correct? Now, same thing, what we can do is, what we can do is, we will try to understand the difference between OLAP and OLTP, which is very important. And um, we'll do one thing, okay? Every class, what we cover, we are going to prepare one question bank. We're going to prepare one question bank, okay? Now, the reason for preparing this question bank is, whatever we prepare, for sure, it will come in interview. Okay, so the first question on the day one you can expect is, what is the difference between OLAP and OLTP? Now, this is the first question they can ask you in your interview. Okay, so please try to understand what exactly it is. No one is looking for a book definition or a Google definition or a chat GPT definition. You should go with an example. Always keep in mind, ATM transaction, it's a OLTP. Netflix. Or remember the iPhone story, which I've told. It always becomes a OLAP. They analyze your activities three to four days. And only then they'll start giving the recommendation. It will take some time. So please remember those two examples. Explain them in your own words. That should solve your first question. Okay. Now, let's look at the difference. Let's look at the difference. Now, if you talk about OLTP, it handles a very... I mean, it handles a large number of small transactions. What do you mean by large amount of small transactions? 8 o'clock, you go to ATM card. 8.30, you go to ATM. Uh, 9 o'clock, you go to ATM. 10 o'clock, you go to ATM. So every time you go to ATM, the transactions is going to be captured, right? So very small transactions like one transaction, two transactions, three transactions, everything is going to be captured every now and then because we are focusing on the timely response, right? So query type, it's a very simple stack. I mean, very simple because you go, you uh, withdraw money. It's just a subtraction that happens in your account, right? You go, you deposit your money. It's just an addition, right? Very simple queries. And the response time is what is really important. We are not talking about seconds here, right? How many seconds it has taken to update? No, we are talking in milliseconds. You cannot wait in the ATM and just wait for an update to happen on your bank, correct? So it should be, the response should be in milliseconds. And it's basically a transactional data we have. And uh, 
as in then the real use case, you go, you take something, immediately the transaction should be updated. Whereas, let's focus on OLAP now. So in OLAP, what happens? Whenever you are actually using this OLAP, they have some complex queries. You know why complex queries? We need to first figure out what this guy is doing, right? How many times is coming to this portal? How many times is going out of the portal? All this information we have to figure it out. So the query becomes very complex because we need to monitor his three to four days of activities. It becomes a bit hard for us. So also it handles a very large volume. Large volume means I need to figure out, right? Every user, three days what he did, four days what he did. Every user, how many movies he have seen, how many web series he have seen. So every record I need to track of it. So it becomes a larger volume as in then complex queries. And here it takes from minutes to days. It can work as well as for minutes and it can take as up to days as well. So for example, you browse anything in Mintra or a Flipkart, immediately open any browser, that advertisement will come. So it is happening within minutes, right? So inside maybe uh, your uh, Amazon, maybe it's taking three to four days for giving you offers. But some of the times when you open any advertise, I mean any product, immediately in the other browser, you will still get that pop-up, correct? You'll still get the pop-up. It's all because of this processing and the data will be aggregated. Last three days, how many times logged in? How many times logged off? How many times added to the cart? How many times removed from the cart? All this information will be important. And the main thing is, they will actually be helpful for decision making. Why Amazon is giving you offer? Because they know that you are coming into the site, but you are not purchasing. Something is stopping you. What is that something? So that is where they are making some decisions. They are making as a pattern. This guy is coming every day, one time, two time, but is not buying. Let me go and give a offer, right? So all this is a comparison between your OLAP and OLTP. The first question you can expect as part of your data engineering role is you'll be asked what is the difference between OLAP and OLTP or what is OLAP and OLTP. Please come up with an example. So take your own example and start explaining any immediate effort, any immediate changes is OLTP transactional processing. The best example is ATM, whereas OLAP give the example called Netflix. Okay, don't go and tell my story there. It's an iPhone story which I've told you for your understanding. Plus, keep it very standard example in your interview. Okay. Now, in most of the system, we are also, I mean, we are getting the data in the form of OLTP. That means about 45% of the data comes from OLTP. Why? Because everything incl includes transaction. Whether you're buying a product, it is a sale. They are making a profit. Yes. So it all comes towards your transactional data and apart from that even though the date uh, we are moving into a higher end of technology please be informed that your sql will never be replaced 50 years it is still standing on top it is still standing on top right so it is never replaceable so please don't think that if there is a new technology that is coming in your old technology will go no it may be true for other technologies like a mainframes or if you take any C, C++, maybe it is a replaceable one day, but your SQL is never replaced. The reason it's a one and only technology which gives you a very fast results. There is no other technology which can match the speed of your SQL transactions. And that is why even today it is on top, right? With all this as a next step, we are going to use SQL with respect to our one of the database. Okay, now let's talk about database. Yesterday I've told you database is something which is used to store your records data, correct? But we have different companies database. When I say you pen drive, what is pen drive? Pen drive is something which is used to store your files, data, pictures, videos, audios, movies. But what pen drive you have? You have Transcend, which is a company. We have SanDisk, which is a company. We have Sony, which is a company. We have a Samsung, which is a company. Now, all four data, I mean, all four pen drives works same. Only the company is changing. Okay. Now, in our case, which database are we going to learn? Which database are we going to learn? That's the first question. 
Second question. If I learn one database, will I be able to replicate the same concepts into another database? That's the second question. OK, yesterday towards the end of the class, I gave an example. Just imagine you have joined this course for a computer class. It's not a data engineering. It's not a data analyst. It's not a data science. It's completely a very basic computer science class. And you people don't know how to use pen drive. So what I'm doing, I'm just teaching you take out a pen drive. It could be any pen drive. Take out a pen drive, plug it into the uh, USB 3.0 port and immediately in the right side of your uh, right side uh, bottom of your screen, you'll get a pop up a new device or a new hardware inserted. You open that then you can explore, copy, paste it, do whatever you want. One final thing that you need to do is while removing your pen drive back, you have to eject it. You have to eject it. That's the safe way to remove your pen drive. This is what they have taught in my computer class in my 10 standard. I still remember in my 10 standard. They told that while removing the pen drive, you have to do a, a safe ejection. You all know this, right? Yes. Now imagine I've taught you this and you people have got trained. You all people went to a different uh, uh, like work and you people are working. Suddenly there they are giving you another pen drive. I am teaching you your Sony pen drive. And there they are giving you Samsung pen drive. What you will do? Will you come back to me? No, you will still apply the process. What you learned here, you will apply that because just the device is changing. The process remains same. The process remains same, right? So only the device is changing. So what we are going to do, we are going to learn SQL with respect to one database, but it can be implemented in any other database. Okay. Another example I'll give you. Just imagine that you people have joined this course for a spoken English class. Okay, imagine this is not any uh, data engineering, it's a spoken English class. So, you all people have joined here to learn English. So, I'm your mentor who is teaching how to speak in English. Okay, so after speaking in English, what you will do? Uh, I mean, I would have taught a very basic English, right? But if I was a person, if I'm in India, my words will be very short and clear. I will not use any complicated words. I will not use a high end vocabulary words. Nothing. Keep it very simple. But the same person, if I am going to US, UK, Canada for my office meetings, my way of speech will be different. OK, I'll not speak like this. I'll try to use some good vocabularies. Make sure that the sentence formations are correct. I'll speak a bit fast because US people are like a bit fast. So uh, my pronunciation also will change. Everything will change. Is it English going to change? No. If I go to Sri Lanka, I'll not even speak this fast. I'll speak even slow because Sri Lanka, the country like they are developing country. They are like learning now. So I'll if I speak like this, they may not understand. So I'll reduce my face. I'll reduce my modulation and I'll use proper simple words. What is happening? English is not changing. Right. You will never join in this course like I want to learn US English. I want to learn uh, UK English. I want to learn Sri Lanka English. No, English is English. The importance that we give in this course is SQL, which is a language. Which database to use? Anything. You can use any database because it's just the company name that they have. And those companies which they have is the databases which we have popular in the market is SQL Server, Postgres, IBM, DB2, MySQL, Oracle, right? So they have their own product. They have their own product. IBM has its own database. Oracle has its own database. Now today, inside Oracle, if they are doing any project for themselves, they will use their own database only. Why will they borrow from others? Right? Why will they borrow from others? So Oracle wants to develop any product. They will use their own database. OK, let's talk about IBM. IBM is a company inside IBM. If they have any project, they will use their own database. What is their own database? IBM. But KSR doesn't have database. If we want to use a database, we will take one product from this and we have to pay for them. It's like a pay and use. People who have own house will stay in own house. People who don't have own house will take for rent and will just start living. That's what I'm going to do. We don't have our own database here. We will go and rent it, right? We'll go for rent. We will use it and we will pay. 
that's the objective of database now in this database the one database that we are going to choose for our learning purpose will be MySQL. Now there is no hard and fast rule that you have to always go and use this database because we are we are focusing on the language. The language is SQL. I'll be helping you to learn the language like how we can create the database objects, how we can communicate it. That is where we are giving importance, not on the tool. So even if you have a MySQL, don't I mean if you have a SQL server, don't worry. Even if you have an Oracle, don't worry. Whatever I'm teaching, simply go and execute in that. But the recommended version is MySQL because assuming that you're all learning for the first time, let's go in the flow. Let's follow a same path. If you already knew it, you can use any of the database. If you don't know anything, if you are doing for the first time, if you are installing for the first time, if you are practicing for the first time, it's always recommended that you go along with us. OK, now all this is about our database. Now, what's the next step? What's the next step? The next step is, is all about why did we choose MySQL? There are a lot of other database, right? Why did you choose this? Well, the one and only reason why we have choose this, it's an open source. So when I say open source, anyone can go and install in your machine and you can start developing your own database objects and you can start querying it. So that's the one reason why we have taken this because for our development purpose, we need an open source. So when I say open source, there is a development version that is available and also there is a server that is available for that it is cost. For example, if we are building a real time project in that case, we need a, a licensed database for in our case practice purpose. It's not required. So let, we are going to download our developer version and the companies which you're seeing in the right side of the screen are the well known branded companies who are using MySQL for storing their structured data. So if you talk about NASA, Facebook and if you also see Adobe as well as Walmart, all these companies are actually using our MySQL database. OK, it's a cross platform. So when I say cross platform, you can install it in any machine. Windows, Ubuntu, Mac machine, you can install it in any machine and it's like a highly secure, easy to use. Now, because of this reasons, we are actually using MySQL. Now you may ask me, is this the only database which provides all these features? Definitely not. There are other databases which provides more than this as well. But in order to learn the skill, one database enough. Most of the times your MySQL is preferred in the real time as well for simplicity, easy to use and security purpose. So that's why we have chosen MySQL for our learning purpose. Anyway, we will be doing all this in the cloud only, but for learning purpose, let's do it in on prem. That is we are going to install in our machine. With that, let's start about the downloading and installing. In order to start your any technology, the first thing which is really important is your software. Without software, you cannot work. OK, so let's focus on the installation. So what I've done is I have come up with a documentation for this because if I install in my machine, it's going to take 30, 40 minutes. So what we have done is we have come up with a documentation. So let's let me walk you through the complete installation document. OK. And uh, with that documentation, you should be able to install your system. I mean, you should be able to install in your system without any issues. OK, so first thing is you have to open this link. You have to open this link HTTP www.mysql.com. For example, if you don't know this URL, don't worry. You can simply go and you can simply go and search in Google. MySQL download for Windows. OK, so since majority of the people are using Windows machine, uh, I'm walking you through the uh, documentation. If you're a Mac user, you already have a document that was available in Google. We can use the same document. Just follow the steps. Very easy installation. So let's go and install our MySQL software. See, please do understand. This is a confusion that we get it. OK, I mean, it's not an interview question, but still uh try to understand what is sql and mysql okay this is a language this is a language this is a database don't get confused okay don't get confused if you see here sql database is there so in order to communicate to a database only we are learning one language 
right if i go and ask in english it will not understand i need to go and ask in a language which the system understands which language it is it is sql so sql is a language whereas mysql is a database with this sql language i can go and communicate to mysql so please do understand that uh, only in one interview i have uh, heard this so let's mark it that as well okay let's be prepared for the worst in case even if they ask in interview what is the difference between sql and mysql you need to tell that sql is a language which is used to communicate to different database whereas mysql was one among the database that's the something which you need to tell now we are going to install mysql as part of my installation so just go and search mysql download for windows and you'll get the first link dev.mysql.com just click this and if you click this you will be able to see this screen okay uh now i don't know how many of you use it uh it's it's completely like uh it's been years that i did not use i don't know how many of you are using facebook right you are using facebook the only one reason which i always go and log into facebook is to just to see whose birthday is because that's the only place where you can go and identify your friends relatives birthday apart from that facebook i don't even use at all it's only for the birthday information i go and because we cannot see in uh, whatsapp or instagram right so all I mean in the uh, everyone would have given their birthday in facebook most of them so we use that for information gathering okay so in facebook if you see there are two things i am not a regular user of facebook i am not a regular user of facebook in facebook have you all observed you can log in to your facebook via two ways one is installing the facebook app in your mobile one is directly using on the browser m.facebook.com have you all tried this you can directly log into your web version in your phone whereas you can also go and install as your app yes or no yes yes what's the difference between web version and an app app is lighter version app is like a lighter version app is a lighter version what is the difference oh, between sorry. web version of facebook and app version of facebook which is on premises that is a cloud no the app version needs a uh, space from your phone but the web version we can use it from the uh, browser then why we have the app then we can directly use on browser only right why they have developed app in app it's faster and uh, web it's slower i am asking a very simple question facebook is having its own app you can also log in in your mobile browser if you can log in from mobile browser why you need a app sir app would be more flexible to use uh, rather than the web version right so app is you need to have i mean it's a user friendly and there is something called videos we can directly uh, see the videos automatically it gets played when you open it and you'll get a notification the app is user friendly whereas if you are a, a limited user you directly go and log in from the browser the reason why i'm preferring browser is it doesn't utilize my space so my phone will always be free my ram is like less utilized my phone will be faster so that's one reason that why i'm preferring web version or else if i'm a, a user who is having a very good phone 8 gb ram 16 gb ram i would always focus on my app similarly here also you have two things okay you have two things one is actually a one is actually a, a web version which is 24.5 mb and one is 470 427 mb and i would also i mean i would also always recommend to install the second version the reason why i'm asking to go for the second one is it's actually like a app the entire software will be downloaded in your machine so you can use whenever you want but some people say that my system is i3 configuration i5 configuration and it's a very old laptop i am having lot of issues in that case don't go and buy a new laptop don't go and buy a new laptop in the laptop itself you go with web version which is that 24.5 mb okay there's nothing difference okay you will just like you using a facebook in your app and you are using in a browser right only that is a difference so please don't go spend so much of money on your laptops whatever laptop you have simply go and install but the recommended one will be the second version which is going to be like a developer version okay so just click this 
just click this and once you click this uh, it will ask you to either sign in or login just ignore it okay you need not give anything just go and click no thanks just start my download you can click this okay but i have created an account uh, so that i keep getting an updates so you need not create all this so you can directly download it and once you download it this is a file that you will be getting mysql installer okay so this is a, a file that you will be getting and it will be present in your downloads mysql installer community 8.0210 if you are downloading now the latest version is 8.0.3 so download the latest version this is something which i've done it a couple of years back so you may find a older version but you can always take a new version download it it will be available in the download from the download you copy it to one of the software folder in your personal drive so create a software folder create a folder called mysql and just copy that it's just for organizing directly running from the download it makes your c drive heavier and your laptop will become slower so this is something uh, which we do as a practice we any software we put it into a d drive f drive or h drive create a separate folder and start installing from there okay so when you have actually copied this file please go and double click please go and double click so it is asking to prepare to install so when you say it's prepared to install every single step i have taken a snapshot this document should be more than enough for you to install by yourself go and double click please wait while the windows configuration is installing next step it's starting okay and it's almost four seconds left now in this after this it will ask you what type of what type of database you want to install are we going to do one project for ksr no are we going to do one project for our client no we are just using for our development purpose the objective of installing this software is for learning right so directly we never uh, go and do directly on the new product first we'd use it for the development first we will install as a development role that what for development what is required only that configurations will be available so choose this default uh, development default and you can select next select this developer and go for next if you are going with the full if you're going with the full full means everything will be installed like managing your security managing a database or tools everything your laptop will become heavier so don't do that we are not going to build a project here everything we are going to do directly in the cloud so for now for the learning purpose we need only developer version so please use only the developer version okay so if you use a developer version and go for next so once you click the next it will ask you for installing your mysql you should have all this in your system you should have all this in your system okay now just go and click execute in order to run your mysql on your system you should have something called c++ uh microsoft c++ all this should be there okay this is visual studio and uh, visual studio 2010 all this should be there but if it's not there don't worry the moment you give execute it will go and evaluate whatever is there in your system if you are lucky enough if your laptop is very new you will find all this in your system directly it will go and install it by chance if you don't have don't worry in my system when i click execute i did not have microsoft visual c++ i did not have so the good thing about your mysql installation it will go and check all the pre ecosystem softwares that is required i know that there is no microsoft c++ visual C, i mean microsoft visual c++ i don't have in my system you need not go outside of this again go to google again download this again install all this is not at all required directly it will ask you on the prompt itself please install that is what you're going to do directly it will ask whatever the pre ecosystem software that is required for running this mysql it will show on the pop up maybe for my system microsoft visual c++ is not there in your case there will be different software just click install directly now this is not mysql installation this is dependencies of this mysql installation so that is why it is asking as a pop up so once i click install this microsoft visual c++ is getting installed so once it is getting installed it's successfully installed okay successfully installed i don't have something called microsoft visual studio tools office runtime that also i don't have that also it's getting run and that is also complete now this is actually part of your mysql installation now you may not get this if your laptop is already having this 
this step will be avoided. Okay, this step will be avoided. For me, two softwares was not there, so it has installed. In your case, whatever software is not there, it will install by itself. You need not go outside your tool. Once this is complete, see all these are complete. There is something like manually which got installed. Now next, go for next. So once you click next, you'll be taken to this. Now all these are intermediate steps. All these are intermediate steps that we need to install. So all these are the softwares that is again required. I mean, it's a, like a product. It's like a product. So you please go and click execute. That's it. You just need to go and click execute. Once you click execute, it start installing one by one like server workbench. See server means you need a database, right? For that to work with it, you need some place that is workbench and it should support your Excel. It should have some connectors. It should connect to your networks. Some documentation should be there. Some example should be there. All this will be installed. So please go and click execute and it will keep on completing. This step is a more time consuming task. So one, 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 it will complete 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. It will keep on completing. Wait until that you get all the green signals here. Green, green, green. The most satisfying color is green. So please wait for all the greens to complete complete and then you go for execute and see everything is complete right so you please go for next now so once you click next you should be able to see the product configuration so all these three will be configured just go and click next don't do any changes in this in this configuration let it be a standalone the reason why it is a standalone is we are not all going to work on same environment each one is going to work on his own laptop each one is going to work on their own laptops. That is why standalone is preferred. Standalone means separately. Each one will work separately onto the system. So I'll go and select that. Go for next. And once you click the next, don't do any changes. Let the port number be same. Let the development computer be same. Don't do any changes. Just go and click next. Once you click the next, you should actually set a password. So don't do anything. Just go and click next. Already that would have been selected authentication method. Just go and click next. And once you give your, it will ask you to give a password. It will ask you to give a password. So the password which you need to give, try to keep it very simple. Like keep it like admin, keep it like welcome or keep it like uh, hello world one, two, three. The reason why I'm saying this, if you forget the password, again, it's a long process. You need to go and change the configurations. You need to uninstall it. All this headache is there. So keep it very simple. It's your own laptop. It's your own desktop. We have installed only for practice purpose. So even if you keep one, two, three, four, five, doesn't matter. But don't forget it. Okay, some people will come and say that after one week, I've forgotten what to do. Again, there is a long process. Again, you have to go and sometimes uninstalling and installing is the only option. So avoid all that. It's your own laptop, right? It's not a final year project that you're doing. So keep it very simple. So keep any um, password and go for next. Don't do anything. Just make sure that this both are selected and go for next. Once you click the next, all the configurations will be applied. Everything is straightforward. All the configurations will be applied. So it's also saying that may take a longer time. So please execute. Every step will be tick mark, tick mark, tick mark will happen. And once this all this tick mark has happened, you simply go and click finish. And once you click finish, the first thing is done, right? The second two things are there, ready to configure, ready to configure. So go and give next. Once you give the next, it will actually ask you a password here. The username will be root only. Don't go and change anything. Let it be root. The password, the password which you kept a couple of slides back, the same password you need to check and go for check. So make sure that it's it's pops up slicks like green color, making sure that you have connected to your server, making sure that it is connected to your server. So the password which you give a couple of slides back, enter here and go and give next. And once you give next, go for execute. And finally, the last step is pending, go for execute. And finally, if you give, it will go and finish. The moment you finish, all the steps are completed. Go and click next. And it says that installation is complete. Installation is complete. And when you go and finish it, a small command prompt opens like this and immediately you can close it. And this is what you will see as part of the installed. Welcome to MySQL Workbench. Now this is a software. This is where we are going to write our code. Okay, very easy installation you should be able to get this.
Okay, so welcome to MySQL Workbench. The final conclusion of this installation is you need to see the screen. This screen confirms you that you have installed successfully. Okay, now uh, there is a small change that you may uh, get it in the slide number or I'd say page number. Yeah, this page. Some of you may not be able to find a, a developer version. Okay, some of you may not be able to find a developer version. Okay, that is developer default. For them, we have created another document. We have created another document. Okay, so in case if it's not there, see if it's there, you follow document one. If it's not there, you follow document two. Very simple. In case if you don't find this developer default, you go and try to refer this. I'll walk you very quickly. Search this MySQL for Windows. See, majority of the people will not find it because it's a new version, right? So I installed a couple of years back. So now this one we have installed recently. So you should be able to get this. So MySQL download for Windows. Search this. Search the first link and download the second version because this is a, a development version. And you can see that the latest version is 8.0.34. The one which I installed was 8.0.1. So this is a version change. So please go and click this develop download. And you can uh, just say no thanks. Just start my download and the download is happening. It's just a 331 MB and once you get it open in a new folder, create a software folder and put it there in the MySQL and copy this uh, MySQL installer community. The one which you downloaded copy here, double click and it start installing. So you will find only four versions. You will not find a developer by chance. If you don't find a developer, don't choose full. Don't choose client. Don't choose server because you're not working for any company or a client here. You're simply going and working for your practice. So please use custom. Please choose custom. So this is basically for the new people. You may not be able to find a developer. Don't worry for that. Also, we have a document. So please go and click this custom. So once you click this custom, it will ask you what products you want to select. So I want my database server. I want my applications and documents. So expand this. There is actually a plus mark. I don't know whether it's visible. There is actually a plus mark. So expand this and select this MySQL latest version. Just plus this arrow mark. So automatically it will come here. And even in the application, you need to select the workbench. And even in the uh, MySQL shell also, you need to select this. So I've already selected two. One is server, one is workbench, and one is shell. So you please uh, keep an eye on this box. Whatever I am adding in this box, you should add from this box to this box. I don't think there is a better document than this. It will clearly tell you what you need to add from this to this. There is an arrow mark like left to right, right to left. So after you select SQL server, workbench, router, and shell, you can please go and click next. So make sure that in the custom you select this four. You select this four. Okay, this documentation again, I'm saying follow the same as it is. Select the four components that is from the available products, put it in the products to be installed. Go for click next. Once you click next, these are all the prerequisites that I need. So just go and give execute. So I, even in this system also, I did not have a Visual Studio C++. So I install this. Even you may not have it. If you have it, well and good. If you don't have it, skip it. So just go and enter. This is installed. Now this all steps, all intermediate products as a prerequisite has been installed. Go for next. Only four products is there because it's a custom. Execute it. One by one, everything will get installed. After all, it's installed. Please go and click execute again. And the product configuration will come. Just go and click next. Don't do any changes. Just go and click next. It will ask you to set the password. Go and click next. Set any password here. Keep it as simple as possible. And I kept it very simple. Even though it's staying weak, weakest, don't worry anything. Just go and keep it. And go and click next. No more changes. And uh, just go and click next. The last step, the configurations as will, will be applied. Go and click execute. It's still running one by one. All the configurations files is done. So the configurations for MySQL server 8.0.34 was successful. Finish. And this is going to give a product configuration. This is a last step. I mean, last step in a sense before the installation complete. This is a last step that you have. So please go and get this next. And uh, as I said, you just need to don't select anything and go and select next installation complete. So just go and give finish. You will be seeing a one small command prompt that is opening. You close it. And this is a screen that you want to do. 
Here is where we will be start coding. If you find a developer version, refer the document one. If you find, don't find that developer version, we have a custom with these two options. You should be able to install very straightforward installation. Every step we have screenshotted it. You will also find a video in our own channel. OK, every step by step, you will be explaining you an installation as well. Whatever I've explained, same thing. You will find a video as well in case if you're stuck. This video also will be available in YouTube. So please make sure that while coming to the tomorrow's session, you have to have this installed in your machine. End of theory classes. It's day four. What we are going to do from tomorrow will be completely practical classes. Two days we have learned about what is Azure Data Engineering. Two days we have learned about SQL SQL installation. And what is really important for us is now jumping into the practicals. OK, so once you see this window, that means your installation is complete. OK, now I'll be sharing this uh, couple of documents uh, in the group, which wherever you belong to, we'll be sharing this and this video also will be available in YouTube. So before coming to the next class, it is must that you should have installed it. OK, now after installed, you will be able to uh, I mean, uh, just bear with me because my desktop is completely filled with files. I need to clean up. Just go and search in the search bar MySQL Workbench. See, you are into a classroom, but where you will sit, you will sit on a bench. Similarly, now I need to write a code. Where will I write the code? I will go and write it in the workbench. So it's like a, a dolphin symbol, right? It's like a dolphin and a setting symbol. This is the icon to identify that it's a software for us. So here is where you need to click this. So once you click this, uh, of course, while well, installation itself, you can you can see that it could have been present on your desktop. Maybe I don't have. You can copy to your desktop as well, but I will go and search here MySQL. So MySQL Workbench, just go and click this. Just go and click this. The moment you open your MySQL Workbench, this is what you will get it. This is what you will get it. Now, this is where you need to go and use it for your installation. OK, now we're talking about MySQL and we are talking about MySQL installation, which I asked you to download this. So we have something called Workbench now. Now, this is a Workbench. This is a Workbench, MySQL Workbench. Now, what is this Workbench? Now, Workbench is actually a tool which connects your server. It gives you a user friendly interface. Directly, I cannot go and write it in my uh, like command prompt, right? I need to have a, a proper UI. So today everyone is using phone, but because it's have a user friendly interface, right? What is happening in the backend? Even you doesn't know. I also doesn't know, correct? So for that, we have something called MySQL Workbench. Workbench is a place where you go and write your code, where you go and write your code. So MySQL Workbench, this actually provides uh, modeling, development, configuration, all this but we will be using only for the development purpose. We are not going to use admin. We are not going to take any backups configuration. Nothing. We are not going to join as a SQL developer here. We are going to join as a data engineer for data engineer. Learning SQL is must and that is what we are going to learn. And as I said, it's a cross platform. You can install it in any of the OS. OK, now this is what when you open, you will get it. This is what when you open, you will get it. OK, let's open it. You will be able to see only one local instance. So just click that local instance. It will ask you the password, the one which you gave during the installation. That password you need to give. OK, so let me go and give my password. The moment you give the password, the moment you give password, this is how the screen looks like one, two, three, four, five. So there are five or four, four or five boxes you will see here. OK, this is what first time when you log in, you will be able to see. Now, this is where we will be writing our SQL code and we'll be learning on language again and again. I'm saying don't focus on the tool, focus on the language. We are all here to learn SQL, not the MySQL. MySQL is just a, a practicing tool for us. You can write it on any other tool. The objective of this course is learning the language. We are not focusing on the tool. So this is a screen that you will see on your installation. What is this? We have one, two, three, four, five boxes. OK, the first box, the first box which you see here, this is where you will be actually writing your SQL code. 
this is where you will be writing your SQL code. Why have to write in SQL code? Can I write it in English? No, sorry. Database will not understand English. Database understands only one and only language. That language is SQL. So you are learning this language to go and communicate to a database. So this is where you go and write your code. Now you just go and write the code here and you will get a result here. You will get a result here. This is a, called a query result. This is called a SQL visual editor where we write here and this is where you will get the results. The second box will get the results and sometimes when you're running multiple queries again and again, we call everything as a queries. Whatever we write, right? We call it as a queries. There we see the history also. We see the history. What are the commands you've run from morning? What have you commands you've run from this session? So those type of history also you will be able to see. Okay. Now uh, there's another additional box which is called help command. You can go and uh, check for syntax. It will give you the syntax and all. Okay. What? Uh, see, of course, it's a language, right? So when I say language, you should know the syntax. You should know the syntax. And for you people, this part is not required. Why? I am your help command. For rest of your course, I'll be your help command. So it's not required for you. If you don't know the syntax, you can directly ask me, not the help command. And of course, you can also ask Google. So this is not required for me because it is utilizing my space, right? It is utilizing my space, right? So I don't want this. I don't want this. If you just go and give a select query, it will tell you what is a syntax. Come on, I can learn it from KSR. Why I need this, right? Or else you can still go and get it in the Google. So better you can avoid all this. What you can do just on the last box, just you can click that. That will go. That will go so that you get enough space to go and write the code now. So you can go and write the entire space. You can go and write the code. OK, so this help command is not required for you anymore. Even if you're stuck with syntax, you can always go and check in the Google. Don't check in this tool. It's an older version search. OK, it's not that precise. Everything they have uh, like elaborated, which is not important for us. So simply go and get it from Google or you can always refer our videos. You should be able to get the syntax. Now the last part is this one. So one project may have n number of tables. What is a table? A table which stores the information of either a customer's products, transaction details. It stores a lot of da uh, data, right? So each data, I'll put it into a specific table and that is why we put it into a table format. Now this is called an object browser. This is called an object browser. So this is an object browser and this is a code where you write it and this is a result you get it. You don't see in another tab that is help command because I've closed it. And apart from that, you're still not seeing any another box which is called history because I've not run anything, right? So that is why you're not able to see anything in the history as well. So this is what is all about tool now. So we are going to start working on the tool from next class. So this is all about the installation. So we started with SQL. Why it is what is SQL? We have seen the history and for this one we have explained about OLAP versus OLTP and we have seen the popular databases in that one database which we have picked is MySQL and of course why MySQL I've given you the complete uh, steps why we are going for MySQL why not other database and it's an open source anyone can install and I'm going to share you a couple of documents I want you to install before coming to the class five end of theory no more theory no more theory. Every class is going to be a practical class where I'll never open any PPT. I'll simply open my SQL server. That is my SQL server and start writing the code. OK, so first 20 days, that is 20 hours. We are completely focusing on SQL. That will be the plan for coming week and next week. Is it clear? Yeah. Any questions? You said something about coming weekend next week. I don't get that, please. I mean, coming week in a sense, the plan for next week, I'm saying. From tomorrow, we'll be starting practicals. Okay. Is there any option that we forgot the root password, Santosh? You have to uninstall it. There is a couple of uh, commands that you need to run it. You can check it in the browser, but uh, there will be some issues because it's a developer version, right? So that's why I keep stressing on the password. Please don't forget it. Keep it as simple. By chance, if you already have in your system, you have forgotten, reinstall it. Okay, got it. Sir, uh, a small question. So we are going to cover ADF fully and uh, synopsis. And uh, what about, uh, like, which one we are going to cover fully and which we will just uh, partially touch it and uh, know the concept in 
see there is no concept of fully partially in ksr okay whatever we are doing in the real time the concepts will be covered for example in adf whatever the transformations which i have used in my project i'll be covering in databricks what i have done in my project i'll be covering what is we have covered what i have done in the synopsis i'm covering here so there is no concept of full of partial and all if i want to teach data engineering it will take 10 years I've been working in data engineering for 10 years, but will I be able to teach for 10 years? Not possible. Will I be able to teach for one year? Not possible. So we have cut shorted. We have actually created like a, as uh, like what are the things which we do in the real time? For that, we have come up with a syllabus. So you can blindly trust what has been taught in the class. That is what you will be doing in the real time. And the good thing about KSR is we give a foundation. So if any time you struggle in real time, you will draw, you will troubleshoot by yourself. That's a main skill that you need to learn as an IT person. You need to know how to troubleshoot it. That is what you're going to learn here. If yeah. you get an issue, what you will do? Maybe I would have teached five to six activities. Maybe in your real time, you may get another activity. So you should know how to do it. That fundamental you will learn here. Okay. So how to debug the pipelines? No. Everything we will be covering. Are we good? Yeah. yeah. Uh, before I conclude, uh, just wanted to talk to you on one small topic okay uh, how many of you had been to maldives how many of you have been to maldives anyone how many of two how many of you have been to maldives i think not half us i think no one yeah, okay. no, think, yeah in the last 3 to 4 days there is some news that is popping up on lakshwadeep modi and uh, maldives. maldives yeah can anyone summarize what happened what really happened the outline is just Modi is going to develop the luxury is like a tourist place. Okay. It's a headache for Maldives. It may a lack of its business or this kind of analysis they are doing officially, but internally I don't know what is the conspiracy is going on. Okay. Anyone? Uh, Anyone? yeah. But like there are some geopolitical scenario and other scenarios are also including that. Like uh, what happened is recently the government of Maldives has changed. And they started the India out campaign to win the election. So it's, it's a geopolitical issue as well. Okay. Was it related to elections? No, 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 no. At least we no, no, no. Time. Maldives had the elections. Like uh, recently in the November 23, okay. only they have the president. Okay. So uh, to win the election, they used a campaign that is India out campaign and is totally against India. Okay. Hmm. And they asked the Indian government to remove the army from the uh, some uh, places of the Maldives also. So it's uh, something like related to geopolitics as well. Okay. Let me tell you one thing. Uh, one of the famous tourist spot is Maldives. 25% of the entire revenue is coming from India. Okay. And uh, in the recent times, we also see that Indian army is also working there. Right. So Maldives and India were very close. But in the recent times, what happened? Maldives and China is like... A, bit of uh, some things are happening between China and uh, Maldives, let, let, getting closer. So what is happening? What Modi sir did, he didn't do anything. He just visited Lakshwadeep. He didn't do anything. He did not want to spoil their business or spoil, uh, spoil their tourist, right? Just one photo he has uploaded in Twitter that he has visited Lakshwadeep. What happened? Just one, one, one image he has uploaded a boat. I mean, he has visited Lakshwadeep. He has posted a picture and he has posted in Twitter. Th that's all he did. He didn't want to like target anyone. He just went and updated this photo. What happened? Maldives government started speaking. What is this? They are, uh, they are like doing all this X, Y, Z. And they started a war fight. A Twitter fight was happening. I don't know whether you notice or not. Last two days, three days, every... Big uh, fight actors, happened, yeah. Yeah. So every actor, everyone is like talking against Lakshwadeep, against Maldives. A lot of things are happening. Well, you know, why did I bring this topic? A small photo, a, just a photo, see how the situation is changing. It's actually turned to be a war fight, like a, a, a words fight. Keep on uh, like talking about Lakshwadeep, keep on talking about Maldives. What has happened in the last four days? One small message, see the impact that has created between two countries. Right, just small one message from Modi, sir, and he didn't even target anyone. He simply went to Lakshwadeep. He has just taken a photo. That's it. And see the impact that has created between these two countries. And now we have also seen that the uh, ministers of uh, Maldives have resigned. I don't know for what reason, but all this has happened. Now the reason why I remember this is 
we are talking about data, 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 right? Data is for ev data is everything for us. A small message. I don't know whether Modi sir did intentionally or like uh, maybe you just wanted to develop Lakshmi. I don't know what was the actual goal, but just a photo has changed the impact of two countries. And everyone is saying now, don't go to Maldives. It was one of the favorite spot for everyone, including me. But now, see a small message turned ups and down. So people say that when when you are talking, don't uh, play with your words. I'm saying don't play with data. A simple data can spoil your complete business. Okay. With that, today is the fourth day we have come across. So tomorrow we are going to learn about the practicals. And I wanted to show you a few more things. This is our website. This is our website. I'll just show you how you can uh, get registered because tomorrow is the last free day. So our team will contact you, but still I'm just giving you a heads up. Just search datavision.com, D-A-T-A-V-I-Z-O-N and just log in. If you are a first time user, uh, of course, nowadays you are getting a, a Zoom link. After five days, you will not get the Zoom link. Okay, you have to join from our app only. If you want to listen our sessions, it is possible only if you are logging to our website. It is possible only if you are logging to our LMS. There is no way that you can get our videos outside our app. So this is one of the thing which we maintain as a security. So please make sure that you get into this app from the sixth day onwards. Tomorrow also you will get a free link. After that, you will not be allowed to attend your sessions if you're not part of this websites and portal. So please sign up. You're the first time and assume that I am the already a user. So I'll go and uh, once you sign in, now this is what you will get it. This is what you will get it. Okay, so you'll be able to see uh, all the classes today and any messages uh, in, in case it has been rescheduled, it's been cancelled uh, due to some uh, any emergencies or let's say I was stuck with some meetings, you'll be getting the class updates here and your session will be uh, the one which you have registered will be you will be able to see here. The one which you have registered, you should be able to see here. And today's class, you should be able to see. Of course, it's a completed class, but uh, you'll be able to see here. And there will be a join button here. If it's a live session that is going on, instead of class ended, you will be seeing a live session. So you need to please go and click that. Okay. Now, uh, what you can do is you can always go to the explore courses. So you should be able to see course. So the course which we are going to join will be this one. Okay, so it's a uh, Azure Data Engineering January free preview. So pre uh, preview is already you are part of the four classes, right? If you want to get the recording of the first five videos, you can go and click this. You should be able to get this. It's a preview. So usually whenever you see a movie, the first thing is trailer. They'll open it, right? They'll open the trailer. It's like a trailer, but the actual course you have to join here. You have to go here and you have to buy. You have to buy. OK, so people who are interested to buy directly, please go and buy here. Please go and buy here. So if you buy, it will show you an option. OK, and uh, of course, if you are choosing an app, it will give you 10 percent of uh, instant cashback. Uh, what is the pass? Uh, Azure, I guess. Azure apply. So coupon code applied. So instant discount you'll get of 2K. So you need to pay only 25K. OK. Uh, and you can use your uh, credit card, debit card, whatever you want. Now, this is with respect to app. Directly, if you want to go and pay in the app, you can pay it and you'll get complete access to this course. You need not do anything directly. You can attend the classes from tomorrow. It's a free class, but after that, you can directly go and get all this course. Now, this is for the people who are directly want to buy. Well, I want some installation like I, I want. I'm not able to pay the complete amount in that case. You can always reach out to our team. So installation in this, I mean installments in the sense we are breaking our fees into two installments or three installments. So we will be giving up uh, like that flexibility as well. But unfortunately, if it's a installment, you have to pay extra. It's like it becomes a 30K. You will not get that discount. Okay, you'll not get that discount. So if you are willing to pay for three installments, it will also show you when you need to pay every month you need to pay. Okay, so let's say today is the first due. The second installment has to be paid one on one month before that is February 8th and the third installment should be paid on 9th of March. So it's like installment. If you're opting for two installments, it will be like 
14 and 14 28. So one installment you can pay this month, one installment you can pay this month. Apart from that, you still need any information. Please call to our number. Please call to our number. In case if you still need any clarification on the fees part, you can always go and reach us. Okay. So the class will be regular time. Okay. So the classes will be like regular time. It will be Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday, the class will be from 8 a.m. to 9.15. And I'll start answering your questions after 9.15. And it's going to be IST. Saturday and Sunday, it's completely uh, for your practice. Doubts, practice. Okay, doubts. will If you want any like uh, support, we'll give you. And uh, if you want, I mean, we'll be giving time for assignments, homeworks, projects. All this you'll be doing as part of Saturday, Sunday. By chance, in case if I was not available one or two days, that classes will be covering on Saturdays. Usually Sundays we don't take. So Saturdays will cover up if there is any missed classes and uh, the classes will go up to 100 days, 100 days. So 100 days in the sense, it's uh, almost come to 120 hours. So usually we plan it for 90 to 95 days. But as and then uh, when taking a class, some of you will have doubts. It can extend. So I don't want to always put a time frame. I will take only 80 classes. I'll take only 90 classes. No, unless and until you be comfortable to this classes, we will be keep on taking. It will come up to four and a half months. So four and a half months will be your duration. OK, if you want, I can teach you data engineering in one month. I can do that. But the objective is not about teaching. It's objective about how you survive in the real time because you're going to showcase some experience in the real time. You need to survive there for that is where we are taking some time in learning the coding SQL 20 days, Python 20 days, and then it goes through Azure. So this will be the uh, duration. And apart from that, we will uh, give you one to one mentorship. OK, like we will help you in preparing your resumes. And we will walk you through what profile, what experience you need to showcase. And uh, all this we will be covering. We will also take mock interviews once you are uh, like uh, finishing the course. And then finally, we'll be pushing you in case if we have, we do have a lot of tie ups. So in case if there is a requirement, we will push you. If not, we'll guide you what direction you need to keep uh, all the interview guidance, how to apply in LinkedIn, how to reach out to uh, HR recruiters, how to get your job in now crease. Everything we will be covering as part of this course. So tomorrow will be the last free class. It's time for you to make a decision. If you have understood for the last four days, join. If you have not understood, still you can go back and review all the other institutes. Check what what is the syllabus they are covering. Check what is the syllabus we are covering. Check the quality and join. We're not forcing your year to join here. All of all, we need to have a good career. So choosing a get career, I'm telling you the path, but where you want to learn, it's completely your choice. You, if you want to learn in KSR, well and good. If you don't want to learn in KSR, if you want to choose another institute, yes, but choose data engineering as your goal because I'm not focusing only on our institute here. Data engineering is something which is in demand. So even if you are willing to learn anywhere else, still choose data engineering as a subject. Okay. With all that, any open questions? So my question is, uh, how will I pay with a credit card in USA? Or does it accept any card? I was yes. checking on that stuff. I'm saying some, some funny stuff I'm not familiar with. So can you put me through if I'm trying to pay with a US credit card? Yeah. Can you call this number? Our team can guide you. Okay. All right. No problem. They'll help you to get registered. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Santosh, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Now for SQL, uh, we have used MySQL Workbench. So this is out of curiosity. For uh, other uh, uh, languages or other, uh, this one that we are learning, the other part of the course, what other uh, 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 portals or this one we'll be using? Like for Azure, we'll be definitely using Azure portal. So for Python and all, what is that we'll be using? For I'm just trying to, yeah. See, for every language which we learn, there is a software that we will be installing. For my, I mean, for SQL, we are installing MySQL. For Python, mm -hmm. we'll be installing something called Anaconda. For Hadoop systems, we'll be, implement, uh, we'll be in, uh, installing something called PySpark. And uh, for the Azure, uh, we'll be going with Azure portal. So uh, we all have the complete framework. Every class, I mean, every installation, I'll be walking you through the same steps, uh, how to install. And that should help you to uh, get the environment set up. And 8 GB RAM laptop would, would suffice for this. More uh, than learning. enough. 
okay okay thanks sir uh yeah i have a question uh, you said like you know uh, data engineering is a demand uh, what about data science and machine learning and data analysis any data driven technology go for it always okay. it's in demand but it also comes with interest if you want to have a very high package a stable career go for data engineers it's a bit tough subject if you want to help the business if you are very good in communication where you can go and help the business to give some ideas suggestions improvements and you can come up with some of the approach go for data science there also coding comes but compared to data engineering data science is bit uh, less complex but there also will be have to know uh, statistics mathematics everything comes into picture and if you want to have a very smooth life where i don't want to take much stress i'm okay to get okay moderate salary i don't want a very high package i just wanted to continue my work in it choose a data analyst no coding you can still survive with the skill because it comes with a drag and drop options so yes yeah, santosh i missed initially class so just i want to confirm my laptop configuration is the 4gb ram that suffice phone itself nowadays it's coming in 16 gb so laptop 4 gb it's not possible you need to have minimum 8 gb but again as i said don't go and buy new laptop try to first uh, use a web version of your mysql if it's working use it if it's not working then you have to upgrade it okay i have an open sure. question one minute sure. i have an open question in the chat uh, today is my first class with ksr my question is a mechanical engineer with 9.5 years Okay. See, one thing which I would say is, uh, irrespective of which domain you come from, irrespective of what is your background, data engineering is still the right option because, as you know, that we are teaching everything from scratch. So you should be able to crack the subject. Only thing is, if one hour I am teaching, one hour you need to practice. That's something you need to keep a. Uh, I mean, it's it's a it's a line that you need to follow every day, one hour. And coming to your background, yes, definitely you will be able to get a job. One years or one point five years of gap doesn't even matter for recruiters as long as you are very much skillful. So don't worry about your gap. Yeah, go ahead. Next one. Yes, Santosh, I have a question again. Santosh, uh, you told that you can uh, with the version we can run the show for my uh, SQL Workbench, but for other uh, this one that we learned, Santosh, uh, is there an option for that also? Like uh, for yes, Python, yes. for example. For everything, you have an option. Okay, sure. Thanks. Next, anyone? Are we good? Yes. Okay. With that, we'll stop here. We'll continue tomorrow. Tomorrow, while coming to the class, please make sure that you would have installed this document. Uh, this documents will be shared uh, over the WhatsApp group immediately. Uh, so please practice, install it, and you can post your questions there as well. And once you get registered tomorrow. Uh, if you're still facing any issue, our team will take a, a screen share and they'll try to install. Okay, we have a team who can help you in the installation in case if you are not able to install it. Okay, we'll get all the support, but as in then you need to support us. Only then you can get your dream job. Okay, so with all that, we'll stop here. We'll meet tomorrow. Thank you.